Kia ora guys, welcome to Study Time's Level 1 Geometric Reasoning Strategy video. I'm Mackenzie. I'm Patty. And we're going to be giving you all the tips you need to help you get through this standard. So geometric reasoning is about understanding a bunch of different geometric principles and then being able to apply them accurately to a bunch of given situations. The key topics in this paper are Pythagoras' theorem, trigonometry, similar shapes, angles in a polygon, angles on intersecting lines, angles on parallel lines, angles in a circle and bearings. Let's get this bread. So in wanting some strategies for success, one of the most important things to do is actually memorise the rules that you're going to be using throughout the exam. Unfortunately, like a lot of other maths papers, you're not going to be given a bunch of formulas or rules that you simply have to apply throughout that would defeat the entire purpose of the standard. So what you really should be doing is practicing a bunch of different questions and knowing where to recognize where you would be using certain principles. And through this, you would learn them and be able to apply them accurately. If you have trouble remembering them, you can do things like flashcards and if you write up something like a summary sheet and blue tack it to the back of your bedroom door or even better on the toilet so you can just read everything. It can be annoying to your parents and everyone else who's trying to live around you but it is very effective. As soon as you get into the question you want to start looking for those key shapes and lines. So are there parallel lines, is there a triangle, is there a polygon? Remember that the rules you've learned only apply to these specific shapes. So once you've identified them you'll get a clearer picture of how to proceed with the question. One really specific case of this is to look for right angle triangles because if you want to use Pythagoras or if you want to use trig then you're going to need a right angle triangle. Remember the little square in the corner that means it's a right angle? Just because something looks like a right angle doesn't mean it is in the picture though so make sure you're absolutely sure before you start applying those rules. If there aren't any right angle triangles already present in the picture you can easily make them by just splitting one non right angle triangle into two halves. Another strategy that can be really helpful is the use of colours in your exam. Quite often the diagrams that you're given are going to have a lot of things going on with it. You're going to have angles P, Q, R, you're going to have angles R, S, T and you want to be able to differentiate them, particularly when you start drawing your own lines on it to make things like right angle triangles so you can apply some other rules. So using colours is really a really useful way to quickly and easily be able to identify different parts of the question that you're trying to answer. Your absolute best friend in this paper is going to be Pythagoras' theorem. Anytime you have a right angled triangle you should be thinking about whether you can apply this. Remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared and when you're actually going to apply this rule you want to make really sure that you know which side is c. c is always the longest side, it's always the hypotenuse. A really common mistake I see students making is that they label the sides wrongly or they don't bother labeling the sides so they end up with a result for a particular side that's longer than the hypotenuse which is totally impossible. So make sure C squared is always about your hypotenuse, A squared and B squared are always about the other two sides. On that note, when you're doing trig you also want to make sure that you've labelled all your sides correctly. So label your hypotenuse clearly and label the adjacent and opposite relative to the angle you're using. This is also where a little bit of algebra skill comes into place because you want to be really confident rearranging to solve to find a side or an angle. And remember you'll be using inverse trig if you're solving to find an angle. Another component of the standard is similar shapes, more importantly similar triangles. It's important to know about these that what you're dealing with is two shapes that have the same proportions or ratios of their sides. So when we're trying to find for an unknown we can use one shape to solve for the other. And the way that we set up this equation is by using cross multiplication where one shape is on one side, one shape is on the other and the sides that are shared stay on the same levels, either as both the numerator or both as the denominator, it doesn't matter which way around you go. Another important part of the standard is bearings and what you want to remember for this is that you always start north facing. Also in these, don't be afraid to use your own shapes, your own drawings in helping to solve the problem. Actually it's needed. So you have to be using your right angle triangles which lend themselves towards your trig rules and your Pythagoras rules. Lastly, the most important thing to remember is that this paper is called geometric reasoning so you need to clearly show your reasoning at each step. On one line you'll write down exactly what step you took and then next to that write which rule you used for each. You don't need to write these down in complete sentences and you don't need to worry about using the exact same notation that your teacher used but you need, do need to be really clear and it's also not enough to just say something like co-interior angles. You need to say something like co-interior angles add to 180. Be clear what the rule actually tells you to do. So guys, this has been the level one strategy video for geometric reasoning. So some last tips from us is to memorize all your geometric rules in the shorthand so it's easier to write in the exam, but make sure that you've got the entirety of the rule so you're not cutting it off midway through. Secondly, if you are having trouble finding the hypotenuse, it's the side that your right angle is pointing towards. So if something's not to scale, you can use that rule to find out as well. 
Finally, don't be afraid to draw all over the paper. Draw your own right angle triangles, draw north lines on your bearing questions, extend triangles. Makes it so much easier to find a clear answer. So in practicing for this exam, we recommend that you look at two to three years worth of uh, past exam papers and practice those questions. You can also check out the study time walkthrough guides. They're available for free online or to purchase in print with next day delivery. And they're designed to walk you through everything you need to know before this exam. So good luck. Good luck, guys.